When my husband found out that I couldn't inherit my father's money, he started yelling. What? You can't get any of his money? If that's the case, I don't want to be with you anymore. I want a divorce right now. After that, I got back at my husband and my sister, who married each other right away. My name is Chloe. I'm a 32-year-old office worker, and I've been married to my husband George for two years. I met George through a relative, and we got married. My family had some money, but since we were the only daughters, my relatives worried about who would take over. They introduced me to George, saying it would be fine for him to join our family. My husband, George, didn't officially join our family, but he started living with me at my parents' home. My mother passed away a few years ago, so it was just my father, my husband, and me living in my parents' house. My husband was very kind and treated my father well, so he seemed like a really good person. However, a relative who introduced him to me told me something worrying right before our marriage. I know it's strange for me to say this since I was the one who introduced George to you, but he's kind of obsessed with money, so be careful. I had already married him and was about to have a wedding ceremony, so it was too late to do anything about it. But I hadn't noticed any signs that he was obsessed with money, so I went ahead with the marriage. Even after getting married, I kept a close eye on my husband because of what I had heard. But I didn't see any signs of money obsession from him. However, he seemed to be interested in my father's money and would casually ask about it when he was having a drink with my father. My father was open about it, so I didn't worry too much. Another thing my husband was curious about was my younger sister. She is five years younger than me, and unlike me, who is calm, she is lively and outgoing with a vibrant social life filled with men. She doesn't look like me, and my husband was surprised when he first saw her. Your sister has a completely different vibe from you, Chloe, doesn't she? Seeing my husband fascinated by my beautiful sister, with her striking looks contrasting my plain and boring appearance, gave me mixed feelings. However, the relative who introduced me to George was worried that if I, being modest and plain-looking, couldn't get married, there would be no one to inherit after my family. I thought there was no need to worry because I had a beautiful sister. But later, I understood why that relative was worried. My father was very lenient with my sister, letting her go to college after high school and even to a vocational school after she graduated from college. My sister didn't have a particular goal. She just didn't want to work. On the other hand, my mother was strict with her, insisting she should get a job right after college. But my father overruled my mother and let her go to vocational school. After graduating from vocational school, my sister got a job at a company owned by a friend of my father's. But she quit after just six months. I was shocked by her excuse for quitting. I couldn't show my full potential at that company. My mother and I were puzzled by how my sister spoke as if she had already mastered her job after only six months but my father believed her and quickly arranged for her to work at a different company. After a while at the new job, our mother fell ill and had to be hospitalized. While our mother was in the hospital, my sister visited every day, often skipping work. Eventually, she quit that job too, claiming she needed to take care of our mother. However, her idea of caregiving mostly involved being in the same room as our mother, chatting or spending most of her time staring at her smartphone in the waiting room. After our mother passed away, I took on the responsibility of managing her affairs, including picking up her laundry from the hospital and ensuring she had fresh clothes. Meanwhile, my sister wasn't much help. Our mother may have enjoyed having her around to chat with, but as her health declined over a month, she couldn't even hold conversations anymore. Within two weeks of her condition worsening, she passed away. Both my father and sister were too shocked to arrange the funeral, so I took charge of that. Thankfully, our relatives pitched in, and we gave our mother a proper farewell. Following our mother's death, my sister moved out of our parents' house and started working part-time. However, her earnings weren't enough to cover her rent and utilities, so our father began footing those bills. It seemed she was spending her money on fun rather than saving. Whenever her part-time income fell short, she turned to our father for financial support. Our mother used to be strict with her, so even when she started working, our father didn't give her an allowance. Now, though, he provides her with whatever she needs. I realized that both my father and sister were content with their financial arrangement, so I didn't see any issue. Even after I got married and moved in with my husband at my parents' place, my father continued giving my sister an allowance. At that time, I didn't notice, but it turns out my sister was also asking my husband for money. 
and he was giving it to her willingly. He couldn't refuse her and told her to keep it a secret from me, saying, Come tell Chloe about this, okay? She might get jealous. My sister lived off this allowance from our father and the money from my husband, doing part-time work when she felt like it. However, this lifestyle couldn't last because our father fell ill and had to be hospitalized. While I juggled visits to the hospital between work and caring for our father, my sister never showed up. Instead, she started calling me and demanding money. Since I've been getting money from Dad every month, I need you to continue that. The rent and utility bills are all being paid from Dad's account anyway, she said angrily, revealing this information for the first time. I was furious with my sister. Instead of worrying about our hospitalized father, she was only concerned about her own finances. Despite wanting to hang up, I knew my sister was also in a tough spot, so I asked her how much money our father was giving her each month. How much does Dad give you each month? You really need to find a job soon and start supporting yourself. In a grumpy tone, my sister replied, Stop nagging me. I was getting $1,000 every month, not including rent. I was taken aback by my sister proudly stating the amount. It made me worry that with such a substantial monthly allowance, she might lose any motivation to work seriously. I assumed our father would recover soon after his hospitalization, so I didn't see it as a major issue to keep supporting my sister financially. However, our father's condition suddenly took a turn for the worse, and I urgently reached out to our relatives. The doctor also informed me of his critical condition, leaving me deeply shocked. I desperately needed support from my husband during this tough time but he claimed to be busy with work and rarely visited the hospital. When he did come, he'd ask insensitive questions like, your father must have a huge inheritance, right? Since you and your sister are the only heirs, you'll split it evenly, won't you? I was speechless in response to my husband's focus solely on the inheritance. It dawned on me that this was what my relatives meant when they warned me about his obsession with money. I felt a deep sense of disappointment. Even when I called my sister to tell her about our father's critical condition, she only cared about her own financial needs. Forget about that. Just make sure you keep sending me money every month. I can't survive without it. The call ended abruptly. I was furious at my sister's selfish words, but I also felt uneasy hearing a faint male voice in the background that I recognized all too well. It gave me a sinking feeling. About a month later, our father passed away but neither my sister nor my husband was present in his final moments. Having gone through my mother's funeral, I understood the weight of organizing such an event. To add to the burden, neither my husband nor my sister offered any help. My sister didn't even attend the funeral. My husband did show up, but as soon as it ended, he disappeared, citing work. Even the relative who introduced us noticed his absence and questioned me about it. What's going on with your husband? It's odd for him to be missing like this, isn't it? All I could manage was a bitter smile and response. He seems tied up with work. He had to head back home. I explained to the relative, who sighed in response. Yet it was I who wanted to sigh just as much. After the whirlwind of my father's funeral settled, my husband approached me with a smirk on his face. Finally done, huh? So how much did you inherit? Even if it's split between the two of you, it's gotta be a tidy sum, right? As warned by my relative before our marriage, it seemed my husband's mind was preoccupied with thoughts of my father's inheritance. Disheartened by his attitude, I replied casually, My sister gets $100 million and I get nothing. I hadn't even spoken to my lawyer yet, and with the funeral just behind me, I hadn't sorted out my own emotions. Seeing my husband so eagerly discussing the inheritance made me feel like laughing out loud in disbelief. Without missing a beat, my husband erupted. What? You can't inherit any of his assets? In that case, I have no reason to stay with you. Let's get a divorce right away. Feeling similarly, I shot back, fine, let's do it. You married me for my father's inheritance in the first place, didn't you? I'll divorce you. As I said this, I handed him the divorce papers I had already prepared. He seemed a bit taken aback as I brought them out, almost as if he expected it, but he signed them nonetheless. Just before leaving, he uttered these words as my now ex-husband. I'll divorce you since you have no inheritance and marry your sister Emily to get the $100 million. Despite that, I promptly filed the divorce papers, severing ties with my deceitful husband. The next day, it seemed he had already submitted a marriage certificate with my sister. A few days later, I received a call from him. 
still believing his delusion, he shouted, When are we starting the inheritance process? Get Emily her $100 million as soon as possible. I had been expecting his call. I didn't want to be the one reaching out to him, as he had left our home on his own. I responded in a composed, business-like tone. Let's discuss it at my place this Sunday. I'll be prepared for the proceedings. My ex-husband, believing he was about to cash in on an inheritance, hung up the phone with joy. Little did he know, I eagerly anticipated his reaction when he learned the truth. When the weekend arrived, both he and my sister came to my parents' house, surprised to find a lawyer waiting there. Nevertheless, my ex-husband seemed confident. Of course you need a lawyer when there's an inheritance involved, he remarked. Then, with a puzzled expression, the lawyer addressed my ex-husband. Before we discuss the inheritance, there's the matter of property division that your ex-wife has brought against you. The lawyer proceeded to show my ex-husband a series of photos, images capturing him leaving my sister's house on specific dates clearly marked. Addressing him firmly, the lawyer continued. These photos serve as evidence of your affair prior to the finalization of the divorce. You will need to comply with the terms of the property division settlement. I had overheard my ex-husband discussing the inheritance on the phone with my sister, prompting me to instruct my lawyer to investigate his infidelity, perhaps thinking I was preoccupied with my father's funeral. My ex-husband and sister had been meeting almost daily at her house, providing ample evidence for my case. Both were taken aback when the conversation shifted from inheritance to their affair. But my ex-husband quickly composed himself and countered. Property division is nothing compared to the $100 million inheritance. I'll settle it immediately. As the lawyer presented the documents, my ex-husband, still speaking with arrogance, signed them without hesitation. Once confirmed, I calmly informed him, enjoy your life with my sister, who gets nothing from inheritance. Since you've signed, I'll ensure the property division is enforced. Upon hearing she inherited nothing, my sister exclaimed, What? Why do I get nothing? I'm supposed to receive $100 million. My ex-husband also turned red and shouted, There's no way there's no inheritance. I won't let you take it all. The lawyer intervened calmly, addressing their anger. Emily is actually the biological child of Chloe's late mother from a previous relationship and was never formally adopted by Chloe's late father. Therefore, Emily, you cannot inherit your father's estate. I also explained to my bewildered sister, when our parents remarried, Emily, you were about one year old. You probably don't remember, but I recall it vividly. I was six years old at the time and was thrilled to suddenly have a sister. Never did I imagine that this same sister would end up taking my husband. Our parents, both burdened with young children from previous marriages, aimed to strike a balance between us when they remarried and began parenting together. My mother loved me as her own daughter, and my father cherished you, Emily. Perhaps he spoiled you more because you weren't his biological child, being overly cautious. Despite both of them remarrying with children, my mother, suspected by some relatives of being interested in my father's assets, chose not to officially adopt you. Those relatives who consistently recommended suitors for me did so knowing I was the sole heir to our father's wealth. If our parents had had a child together, things might have been even more complex. But fortunately or unfortunately, they didn't. Perhaps they avoided having more children to prevent future inheritance disputes. Now understanding that my father had been financially supporting my sister even into her adulthood because he couldn't leave her his inheritance, I realized the extent of their relationship. Like my sister, I also hadn't been formally adopted by my mother, but it never affected how we sought each other. It seemed our parents hadn't disclosed their remarriage to my sister, and today was the first time she learned the truth. As for my ex-husband, his face turned from red to pale as the situation sunk in. Not only was he not inheriting what he expected from my sister, but he was also facing a property division claim he had already signed off on. With a pale face, he asked me, was it a lie that my sister was getting $100 million and I was getting nothing? Suppressing a laugh, I replied, of course, it was a lie. It was my way of getting back at you for cheating on me. Besides, my father's estate was nowhere near $100 million, even though he was wealthy. Suddenly, my usually quiet sister erupted. I've been shopping so much, thinking I'd inherit Dad's money. What about the support Dad was giving me until now? Will you take care of that, sis? You're married with a dependable husband now, so you don't need it anymore, right? Make George support you. 
She glanced at my pale ex-husband, but he shook his head. I can't do that. I also spent a lot, counting on the inheritance and now with the property division, I'm stretched thin. With that, my ex-husband unexpectedly dropped to his knees before me, begging, Chloe, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Please, can we reconcile? The lawyer, who had been packing up to leave, chuckled at the sight. Where had the arrogance he showed upon arrival gone? George, pleading on his knees like that, seemed utterly absurd. After our discussion, my ex-husband and sister left, and they divorced soon after. It seemed my ex-husband lost interest in my sister once he realized she wouldn't inherit anything. He mentioned property division, but since he had no assets, I arranged for him to pay from his monthly salary as advised by my lawyer, ensuring I received what was due. My sister, who lost our father's financial support, struggled to make ends meet with part-time work but eventually faced overwhelming debts and declared bankruptcy. She moved out of her apartment and I lost track of her whereabouts. My father's excessive support had made my sister dependent, hindering her ability to work seriously. Subsequently, my relatives began suggesting potential marriage partners for me as I lived alone in my parents' house. But I declined. I wanted to find a partner on my own terms, determined not to repeat the mistake of marrying someone like my ex-husband again.